You're watching a live sports presentation of Texas Student Television. It's club hockey, Texas versus Texas State, and the I-35 matchup, the rivalry of sorts. The two teams haven't faced each other in football, but they've faced each other in basketball tonight. They face in the rink in the club sport region. Here we see a lot of stuff from this rivalry. Right now, the match, Texas State in favor 3-2 to two with the win last night. Hello, everyone. Brooks Cabina here alongside Mark Skull. Glad to have you here with us. And this I-35 matchup, I heard something about if Texas State wins, toll boots go up or something. I'm not quite sure. That, that's what I heard. I'm not entirely sure either, but that's, that's what I've heard. Well, hopefully not. There's already all too many problems going on the interstate. But Texas State winning last night. So they own the series right now 3-2. to two. And last semester, last time you saw us on hockey, Texas won in overtime. And that offer a Spencer Dalman goal, a guy we're looking forward to see tonight. The next day, Texas State won 8-3. to three. And then last night, Texas State winning. So if things go like they do, they split the series. Texas getting a chance to do that tonight. But if you look at the significance for this game tonight, you know, Texas last game winning that way. This game, though, how does Texas have to play against this kind of team in order to sustain that victory? Well, both teams here tonight, they're both very talented offensively. So the key to this game is to stop, uh, make some stops on the defensive side of the ball, and it all comes with the goalie for both teams. Uh, the, the Texas State goalies, Heffin, Soden, and Carpenter, are all averaging four goals against uh, ev in every single game this year, and the Texas goalies aren't much better, but they, they still, they're still able to stop the puck. But what, what comes down to it is that the goalies need to stop the puck, and then the people in front of the goalies need to help block the puck also because mm -hmm. it's not always the goalie's fault. But a lot of people will blame uh, goals on the goalies, but it's also the people in front of the goalie who, are, who are, uh, have to block the shot, block shots. I mean, it's not just the goalie's fault. If it's if it's five on one, the goalie's going to have not that many opportunities to block mm -hmm. a shot. So there's going to be a lot of fault around on the ice, but you've got to stop the puck. You're right about that. So with Texas right now, last night had some trouble stopping the puck. So on Texas' state end, who do you feel on that and is going to really make it difficult for Texas to keep that puck out of the goal? Well, the players Texas needs to watch out for for Texas State are Hayden Ray. He's got 43 goals on the season, 18 assists. That's a total of 61 points, which he's averaging almost three points a game, which is incredible. Yeah. And then Dominic Girard with 40 goals and 14 assists with 54 points on the year, which is about two points a game. So those are the two guys Texas needs to watch out for and if they want to uh, win this game. Right, and on the Texas end, we know Spencer Dalman from the last goal in overtime to win. But since then, other players have been stepping up for the Longhorns. Who on their end is going to make it tough for the Bobcats? Well, the, the one player who's going to make it really tough for the Bobcats is James Grachos. Uh, Grachos has 10 goals and 23 assists on the season. He's om averaging almost one point. Uh, he's averaging 1.83 points a game, which is incredible. Not as great as Hayden Ray and Dominic Garrard, but it's still great. And then the other guy you need to watch out for is Justin McGowan. He's scored 16 goals in 17 games this year. So there's a good chance that he'll end up scoring a goal tonight. So that's two, those are two guys that Texas need, uh, needs to step up tonight. And if they want to win this game and tie the series up on the year. And McGowan, only a freshman. Really interesting to see how much he can do already this season. A lot of veterans on this team, so it's interesting to see how those guys can step up. Well, a few minutes away from the buck drop here at Chaparral Ice. Glad to have you with us here on Texas Student Television. And Brooks Cabina here with you alongside with Mark Skull for a great evening tonight for sure. And whenever we look at this game, a lot of stuff from Bobcats, from Longhorns. You know, we never see this matchup too much, but I mean, whenever you see this hockey team, Spencer Delmet, all these things, I feel like there's little more than just defense and offense. Like there's got to be some kind of effort that comes from the two, the spark, if you will. Where does that come from, and who has that edge tonight? Well, it's a rivalry game. I mean, I I would say Texas has the edge just because they want to get this win, tie the series up. You don't want to be going two and four against a rival team, and. But what key to the game is in the rivalry game, I mean, I'm not sure if you remember last game, that there's a lot of fights and penalties. So in a game like this, you need to, you need to really keep your composure. So if it, the teams are able to keep their composure, the team who's able to keep their composure the best will end up winning this game because the team who doesn't keep their composure will get in the penalty box and the other team will have a chance for a power play goal. The power play is certainly a, a, an effect that the Longhorns like to use. Hello, hockey. And coming in, and we're getting the introduction here at Chaparral Ice as the teams come on to the ice 
for the beginnings of the game. We'll have the starting lineups up for you soon on Texas Student Television here on the ice. And right before this, we'll see how these two teams are effectively together. We'll tell you again what's on the line. Texas two and three on the season so far against the Bobcats, but right now both similar in record of total score. Texas 14 and 10 right now, and Texas State 14 and nine now with the win last night, 15 and nine. So in all of these eras, you'll have a chance to distance yourselves in these final standings for the rest of the season. So more of that on that. So if Texas ends up getting a win like this, Texas State needs to be able to hold on to and secure a spot for those uh, crucial things at the end of the season. Both teams are fighting for a spot in the regional regionals so that it's really important that that this game really comes down to who makes it to regionals and who does not so this is a huge game for both teams and the starting lineups being listed out onto the field for texas and we've heard from justin mcgowan your player the freshman from danville california 23 points on the season 15 goals See if he can have that kind of effect tonight. But Texas State, we see their men out there. Asan Arami, a senior from Austin. So many points and goals from there. We'll see how they can handle that kind of place. But the captain on the team, we talk about having a chance to do all that stuff. What is something that they are going to have to take away from Asan Arami? Well, you never want to get the captain involved because he's always the main guy. He's the guy leading the team. So if you're able to stop the captain and try to get an extra guy on him, making sure he doesn't have a chance to get a stick on the puck, that would be crucial for Texas to get this win tonight. And the starter is out on the ice for the Texas Longhorns. Cameron Booth, graduate student from Buffalo, New York, the defenseman. Spencer Dalman, the senior from Deerfield, Illinois. Also, Verneri Jamuru, the senior from Duluth, Finland. And the goalie, David Kindle, the senior from Dallas. 15 games played, 4 and 1 record with 30 goals allowed. He's got an 88% save percentage. The players come to the ice, and Asan Arami will face off against James Garachos. Sophomore also from Buffalo, New York. So him and Cameron Booth going in. Garachos, 35 points on the year, 10 goals and 23 assists. We're all almost about to go here at Chaparral Ice. Glad to have you here with us. There's the drop and we're going away here at Chaparral Ice. Now into the Bobcat Inn. Going racing over to get it is Crabtree fighting for only on the end shot goes and blocked away from Samuel Soden so action early for the Bobcats and they'll go to the face off on the Bobcat end a lot of attacking to start off an aggressive standpoint from the Longhorns mark oh yes and Samuel Soden you just saw him get that stop he's played 10 games this year uh, with a 5-4 and four record 4 goals against so that was a great save for him Scott Hill with the puck going on Trying to get past the blue line. Back into the Longhorn end. Here comes Cameron Booth. That's number two. Going on to the Longhorn end. Now, three on two. Trying to get an up shot. Blocked away. Now into the back end. Longhorn's trying to get rid of it. Bobcats right against the boards. Freeing it. And flipping it up. Now into the stick of James Garachos. Up onto the boards. Back behind. Kendall trying to get it away. Going on to the other end. Now, long shot. Right into the boards, going up behind the puck. Over on the right side, here comes Texas State. John Dayton with it. Coming up to the top, a high flip into the Longhorn end. And that will be an icing call. They'll get a break and reset, try things off. Texas State spending a lot of time on their end. Texas getting a couple of shots in. Aggressive spot to start off the game initially, but a lot of that going. How do you feel like Texas is handling this one so far? Well, Texas, the, both teams are playing pretty well right now. I, I, the, Texas got a lot of opportunities due to James Garachos. He was, he was able to skate really fast around the defenders. Lot, no one was able to contain him. He was able to get 
uh, shots open for his teammates. And a lot of the keys to this game is just being able to go a lot faster than the other team and just getting open shots. And flattened against the side, trying to work it out. And he does, gets it up to the upside. Here comes Scott Hill with it, going out of the end. Stolen by Brian Moreno. Up to the left side, off of the boards, going back in behind the goal line, up to the blue circle. Trying to get up right, stolen by Essen Arami. Getting into Longhorn head. Now in a freeze open space, trying to get a shot off, can't get it, and it's behind the goal. Great work by the Texas defenseman there, not allowing that shot to go through. Uh, he had a wide open net, and tech, the Texas defensemen were able to slow him down. Crabtree, right, trying to get it through. Now they have a chance over here. Kyle Hughes, shot right side, and in! A goal for Kyle Hughes. The first one in, they give Texas State the lead, one to nothing. What a great move by Kyle Hughes there. He was able to find the back of the net going top shelf on the goalie on the glove side. So what a great shot. Shot going on the right side. Got that goal against David Kendall. That's his 31st goal allowed this season. And the Longhorns find themselves down again. Losing last night 5-3. to three, Trying to stay in contention for these last spots. And the, keep the I-35 rivalry intact. Are they getting hit on the left side, trying to swing it around, keeping it in the Bobcat in. They're working up to the end. Flipping it back, a shot blocked by Soda. Now it to the middle, trying to work it back, staying on. And here comes Michael Webb on the left side, trying to get a shot, and it's stripped away. And trying to get it on the back side. Flipping and right across the boards. Swinging around, up to the top. Here comes Colton Larson and swings it on the, the, into the Longhorn end. Back to the top, Greg Dole, swishing left side. And flipping it up, goes back behind the goal. Samuel Soden working it back to the Bobcat side. Flipping it up, going back to the mid circle, switching left side, trying to get a shot off and can't. And it's picked up on the side. Too many defenders in the area for Texas State there. They couldn't get through. And a shot from Holweger, and it goes wide. Back around the boards. Texas trying to get out of their end. They've been pressured so far. Two minutes gone in the first period. Across ice. And we'll get the first foul of the night from the Wiseman Harrison. And the lines will change into the game. Now checking in James Garachos and Justin McGowan, who had some time to rest up after the first initial start. Looked like an offsides there by Texas. You can't, puck can't cross the ice before the player does. Texas wins the faceoff as Garachos takes it back into his own end. Taking it back and being challenged, pressed up. Chet Danto with the puck now, flips it left side. Jamura, Jamura loses it up into the middle. Gains it back, Grachos. Grachos trying to find some space, heavily pressured by this defense of the Bobcats. Being patient with it, backing up, flicking it right. Now Miguel with the chance to advance. Throws, flips it left and it goes out and being heavily challenged by this Bobcat defense. Flipping right and blocked by Soden and it's behind the net. Flipping around the boards, back up on the right side. Hill flips it left. Arami chasing now. And Kendall will try and work it back. Gets back into his end. A shot again and blocked by Kendall. Longhorn's being pressured in their zone. Cameron Booth trying to flick it out. And he's checked hard. A big shot coming from Hayden Ray. They're going to call a foul on him. That's. The first roughing play that we'll see tonight, a big shot against him and felt like a little bit legal, but he's challenging that one, but that is the foul they will call, so the lines will switch again. Texas State still leading one to nothing. That was a heavy blow for Texas. That was a huge hit on the Texas player. Now he's trying to find an open shot, it's blocked. Now a fast break coming. Dominic Gerard on the right side. Gerard flicks, and it's blocked by Kindle. And a tremendous save, and it's out of the arena. 
And they'll have a face off on the near side and it was an extremely close play as Gerard had a chance on goal to put Texas State up two. Even though Dominic Gerard did not make that goal, that was a great effort by him. He faked out, went in, and he tried to go top shelf on uh, Samuel Sodden, but he wasn't able to get it. And Gerard does not win. In fact, Tyler Durham, the senior from Colleyville, Texas, takes it up, and they're trying to get it out of their own zone. Longhorns trail 1-0 as McGowan brings it up towards the middle. Flips it up and a hit in the back, so there will be no icing call. And flipping back up, Colton Larson. Larson swings it all the way back, and it's fielded by Kendall. Texas has come off strong with some couple good sequences uh, uh, by Texas. It's very important to come back with a good shift after giving up an early goal like they did. And Texas and the power play. One minute left as Durham's still waiting in, so they're trying to take advantage of this. Out comes McGowan. McGowan fighting forward on the right end. Back behind the goal. Trying to flick it out as Texas State, and it's fielded by Durham. Durham tries it, a shot from Danto, no good. Can't keep a stick on it. Durham trying a shot too wide. Back into Danto, around the side, trying to flick it up. Here comes Grachos. Grachos fighting for it on the other end, trying to find an open space. Swings out left, up to the point. Flicking around, trying to find an open space. Flips it out. McGowan. McGowan with a shot, no good wide. 24 seconds left in the power play. Durham with the shot. Flicked in and blocked in back behind the goal. And he'll cover it up. He'll have a chance to recover. 14 seconds as the time is called. So Texas trying to capitalize on this situation. Down one nothing. It'd be a loss of the battle if they aren't able to capitalize on this one, Mark. Oh, yeah, you need, to, you need to capitalize on any power play opportunity you have, but Texas State's pretty good at the power uh, uh, penalty kill, so they're doing a great job, too. And Christian Chase is able to flick that one out. And back comes Mallard there. Now a sh shot from Dole trying to get it back in so they can attack, and the penalty is over from Durham, so he comes back out, and now... Bobcats at full strength. They'll come back through and flick it up back behind the boards. Flicks it back into the Bobcat zone. Flicking it right. Goes back. Kendall gets back into Dole. Dole, the junior from Sugarland, Texas. Eight, three points and one goal on the season. And flips it. So how free and play. Hayden Ray and a nice cut in trying to get up the right side off the boards and here comes Cameron Booth looking up top and the Bobcats retain possession 12-17 to go in the period Texas State owns the lead one to nothing John Dayton with it now a shot off the stick of Kendall and out of bounds and they'll have the face off again at the front so Texas State aggressive in this first period and they have led this one to get a one nothing lead, Mark. Texas State is definitely the better, looking like the better team right now. They're always in the Texas, Texas Longhorn zone, and they're getting a lot of good looks on goal, and which Texas isn't getting right now. And Brett pushes over <laughs> Joseph Happer, and Texas State with a chance to get a shot on goal here. Ooh. And a big hit as Texas ends up pulling it away. Scott Hill. Getting it back, Brian Moreno taking it into the Bobcat zone. Trying to chase right side, shot, block, recovered, and is it into the goal? It is! Cameron, Brian Moreno able to get over and squirt that one in right behind the reaching arms of Soden. A good rebound, and now Texas has been able to tie this one one to one. Wow, what a shot there. I mean, he got checked as soon as he, was, as he hit the puck in, and it looked like the Texas State goalie was able to stop it, but it looks like he wasn't. Oh, it looks like, you know, I don't think there was a goal. doesn't look like there was a goal there. Well, they've called it a chance to be able to recover, so he was able to plant that one down. So one to nothing, still the lead for Texas State. Texas still in the Bobcat zone. Flicking. They're trying to kick the puck out of that way. It's, it's, a, it's a battle out there, man. Uh oh, and a shot oh. goes wide. And a shot with the rebound, and that one goes in. 
What a shot by Gracios there. Off the backhand, off the rebound. What a shot. What a goal. Wow. You gotta love effort from a guy like Gracios. He's always he's always giving it his best work every every uh, second of every play. You gotta love an effort from a guy like that. So Texas able to tie this one up with 11-11 to play in the first period. And out comes Joseph Hafford on the faceoff. Texas wins. Now Texas flicking into the Bobcat end. Back in. Now Steven Saiki with it, bringing on the left side. Flipped up and up at the right end. Now charging is Adair Miles. Miles flicking up to the right side, Crabtree. Working it in, getting it outside. Now it's recovered. Get on from Dylan Durham. Durham on the left end. Justin McGowan fighting. Get on the right side. Crabtree. Crabtree getting it in. Now flicking all across the boards. Is it there? Texas State battling hard, trying to get it through, and Ooh. it's recovered. These things are getting a little testy in this arena. And they've, they've called roughing again. John Watts was getting into it with the Texas State player. Now John Watson will be sent to the penalty box, so now Texas State will have a chance for the two-minute power play. Like I said earlier, Brooks, the key to this game is keeping your composure. I know these two teams are big rivals, and they, it's the I-35 uh, Battle of I-35, but you got to keep your composure so that you don't have to have a lot of penalty kills. And the faceoff one by the Bobcats. Coming on the right side, Larson. Larson, long shot, tipped away. Cameron Booth taking it into the inside. Now the Bobcats on a chance. Trying to flip it. A good defense by Kendall. Now, Larson, Larson flips it left side at Orami. Orami trying to find some chance. Flips it on into the goal line, back behind the hockey side. Going left. Michael Webb up on the right end. Now a long shot, wide. Here comes Texas State, flipping it. Getting up to the side, Texas State. Getting in, Cameron Booth flipping it up right. And Heiser's able to clear. And it's picked up from Soden. And Texas gets to change the lines and recover. Good effort there by Texas. Things were getting a little bit crazy uh, in their zone. Texas State looked like they had a really good opportunity to score there because they weren't able to clear it, but they ended up being able to clear it anyways. Going up and inside, Texas State trying to push on with this power play. 47 seconds to go in the advantage. Pressing again. Here comes Cal Hughes. Left and three on three. Taking a shot, right side flips and caught. Well defended by Kendall, and with 36 seconds to play in the penalty, we'll get a chance to recover and reset. Excellent defending from Kendall. And then winning faceoffs in the defensive zone is crucial to a team's success, which Texas has to do right here. If you can win the faceoff while in the defensive zone, it is huge because it will limit the other team's opportunities on the off offensive side of the ice, and especially during a power play. So Texas wins, and they'll try and clear. It's caught by Griffin Klein. Klein. Getting up the right side, Dylan Durham with the shot. It's taken up the left side, going into the Bobcats zone, clearing it again. And it'll be recovered by Miles Adair. Adair trying to clear, charging is Nico Garfano. Up from the defensive side, 10 seconds left in the power play. Seems like Texas will be able to defend. Top score tied 1-1. Flipping up around the boards. Now the penalty is over. And changing in, here comes Justin McGowan to recover. Now, Dominic Gerard on the left side. Jason Crabtree coming up, trying to flip it. It comes back in to the stick of Nicholas Brett. Now, left, McGowan fleeing it up. And on the run is Brian Moreno. Right side trying to find some space. Pick, stick, shot, off the side. And it's recovered by the Bobcats. Cleared into the Texas zone. A big shot coming from Brian Moreno, but it was not able to go through, hitting the post on the right end. Nico Garfano had an opportunity at the rebound also, but he was just too fast for it. Texas able to sustain some offensive pressure as 
Texas State fighting for it. Nicholas Brett able to recover on the left side. Here comes Curtis Hallway around the boards. Texas able to come over to this side, clear it, get back into the Bobcat zone. Now Nicholas Brett gets it left side. A nice little move coming from Curtis Hellwager. Hellwager on the left end, trying to pass it back. If Texas State able to recover. Brett takes it left side and stolen back from Texas. They're able to clear. Now into the Bobcat zone. Bernie Jalmuro, and he slams. Recovered by James Grachos, trying to make something out of it. Going across the boards, chasing. Bang. And a Cameron Ooh. Mixon. Mixon getting a big hit. Delay yeah, penalty on the penalty on the hit on James Grachos. That was a gruesome hit. Oh, and Grachos just tried to slash number 10. Oh, big bedlam starting here at Chaparral Ice. He was not satisfied with that. And coming Greg Dole pressing him against the glass saying, calm down, my friend. Like right. I said earlier, you got to keep your composure. I know, I know this is a big game for both teams, but you got to keep your composure. They're trying to hold back right now Hayden Ray from the, oh, the skirmish, and now James Grotchus is going into the penalty box, even though he shouldn't be because, well, he, he was because he slashed. He, right. It was a penalty that could have been easily avoided. you got to keep your composure. Now it will be a 4-on-4 four four, uh, matchup for two minutes. Well, that penalty just take, took away the advantage. You had to try and get the lead for the first time, and... Nicholas Brett will be serving his, his time alongside Garachos, and neither of them happy. And the referees are just satisfied that there's two boots and not one. Garachos is holding his head there. He might have had a hand injury. It was a, it was a pretty brutal hit on him. So hopefully he's okay. Well, Texas four on four now against Texas State. The score right now, Texas one, Texas State one. And Texas had a chance to Throwing on one side, and they are checking over on James Grachos, and they need him badly. Having 10 goals on the seat, he's been one of the offensive weapons so far. Yeah, yeah. they're going to need, te Texas is going to need Grachos if they want him to win this game. It looks like they're having the, the two captains for the teams uh, talk to the refs right now just to make sure everything stays clean. Let's keep this a good, fun, clean hockey game. Well, I don't know how much you can have that work <laughs> it's a, a game it, of it is on contact it is hockey but i mean you got it you can hit but you can't hit so you you can't be hit, hitting to hurt people and it mm -hmm. looks like on that hit that was on gracious it looks like he was hitting to hurt and gracious definitely still looks like he's in pain he's he's leaning down with his hands on his head he does not look good well you mentioned the rivalry here this means a lot to both teams and they've sent looks like it will be a second player so they're calling two people in and that's Samuel Morales who goes in. So now, looks like it was a four on three. Five on four, five on four. They kept one, one guy uh, on the ice for both teams. And a broken stick from Texas as they clear it. Kendall with it and he flips it to Dole. And Vernary Jamuru was able to Grab a new stick, so he's up and ready. It's Texas State pressing. Now the, the five on four, trying to clear. 140 gone in the penalty. And it seems like Texas State with the shot and blocked by Kendall. Fighting for it on the boards. Trying to get it through in. Christian Chase flipping it left side. I mean, this Back is into the Bobcat in. This is a chance for Texas to take advantage. It can't be, when you are on a, have a five on four power play advantage, you can't be letting Texas State get opportunities for shorthanded goals. Well, Bobcats able to clear back again. David Kendall, a minute 10. To score time of 5.50 left in the first period. For Jamur, taking it to the blue line, crosses right side, and he's hit against the wall. Texas cleared for a shot and block, trying to find his way to get a hand on it, but can't. And flipping it, trying to stick it up, but Texas State able to clear back up to the blue line. Blocked by Joseph Halford, trying to get a shot. Flips it down into the side to Brian Moreno behind. Back up, they're trying to find an open shot. Back to Halford, he'll take it up to the side. Long shot blocked by the Bobcats, and they're able to clear. Off the skate, and he'll come to the red line. Back into the Longhorn end. 33 seconds left in the penalty as they'll get a switch in the line, and the puck will go out of the arena, so we'll have a stoppage of play. 
Gracho still looks like he's hurting in the penalty box. I just saw him holding his neck. It doesn't look like he's going to be 100% for the rest of the game, but I'm sure he's going to try to give it his best effort, considering this is the battle of the I-35. Up comes Cody Heiser to try and win it for the Longhorns. And he cannot hold, and the flip goes back into the Bobcats, and they are able to clear. Racing over is Dylan Durham, and he'll take the puck right behind the goal. And Justin McGowan. Flipping it up, 10 seconds left in the power play, and it's flipped up and wide coming is Curtis Holwager up on the left side, breaking, splitting, and it's knocked away by the Longhorns, and a big hit as he's down. Longhorns trying to clear. Players come back on after the penalty. The penalty is now over, and Texas trying to clear. Back into the stick of John Dayton. Getting on the left side, stolen back by Durham. Durham trying to clear. Get it back up. And to the stick of Webb. Webb pressing now. Now to the blue line. Flipping back. A nice pass. And a shot left side. And it's blocked by Soden. And he's able to hold on. Good opportunity for Texas there with the 2-on-2 two -two, uh, break. But they weren't able to finish. But looks like now the penalty power play is over. So it will be a 5-on-5 five five play for the remainder of the period. Unless there's another penalty. Grachos is has his helmet off going back to the bench. I don't know if he's going to be coming back to this game. Nick Garfano on the face off at Texas State, getting it, clearing, trying to get it some space up. Now comes Jason Crabtree, flipping it right side, trying to get a shot open, flips it up, and it's blocked by Kendall. Now Scott Hill, bringing it up, hit on the left side, a big hit. Here Miles Adair, clearing up into the Bobcat end. Kendall trying to hold on to it, and it's recovered by the Bobcats. Jason Crabtree chipping up the right side. Flip up. Crabtree again, right behind the goal, trying to find a space. Flips it, and then blocked by Kendall. Chip up into the air. Texas trying to get it out. A huge, immense pressure coming from the Bobcats. Now left side. And Jason Crabtree with the shot. Trying up. Crabtree in around the side. Another shot, and Kendall another block. Huge pressure, and Texas is going to have to get it out, and they do. A nice stick. And now in transition, Colby Smith with the shot, and up and too high. And they have a stoppage of play as the puck goes out for the rear. They'll have a chance to switch their lines, and they'll have a face-off on the Bobcat end. Great opportunity for Colby Smith there with the chance to score a goal with just him and the goalie. Just... And that looks like something's going on with the goaltender's pants, but we'll see what I think he's okay. Well, Kendall readjusting himself with 3.12 left in the first period. Texas State tied 1-1 with the Longhorns, trying to get the lead in their series so far in the season. And one last night, 5-3. Have the advantage so far tonight as Texas trying to gain an advantage, and it really was a nice open lane for Colby Smith. That's about as wide open a shot as you're going to get in a game like oh, you're this. You're not going to get a, I mean, the Texas State defender definitely made a great play on Colby Smith, but Colby Smith's got to take advantage of those opportunities, and he had, he got a good, he had a good shot on goal. It was just a little, little high. Well, that's the equivalent of fixing a divot out there as they bring a Water bottle out, pour it on top, and clear it up and make sure it's all level. So here comes the face-off and into the Bobcat in. Now charging against is Brian Moreno. Moreno already had a shot, trying to flip it in, and, and the Bobcats are able to clear. Off the stick of Dole. Dole back for the Longhorns. Three minutes left in the period. Tie game. Back up the wall, trying to get it up to Moreno. Moreno, right side, flips it back into Dole. Dole to Halford. Alford right side. Back to Dole. Dole, long shot. Block. Now on the inside, Texas State with the advantage. Elson Arami with the shot and taken away by Kendall. Kendall's really done a good job tonight. Despite that first goal coming in early, he's, he's blocked every single shot that's come his way since. He saved a lot of shots, blocked a lot of shots. He's playing really great right now. Can't, can't get much better than what Kendall's doing right now for Texas in the inside the blue. Well, Rami feels he had a better shot at that one. That puck going right into the chest of Kendall as Texas State on the face-off. Texas is able to win. Now into the stick of Stefan Psyche. Stephen Psyche 
losing it. Oh, and here comes the shot. Trying to free. There's Cameron Mixon. Mixon facing off, and it's stolen away from Colby Smith. Colby Smith flipping up to the top, into the Bobcat in. And is this icing? They'll let it go, and it will be. This faceoff here is crucial for Texas to win. They're in their own zone. You want, you don't want Texas State to get another opportunity with only two minutes left in this period. So this, this faceoff is crucial for this Texas team. Well, they've been aggressed against so much in this game. Is Texas State able to win? Trying to get a shot on it. Texas able to pull it off, and here comes. Michael Webb in transition, down to the blue line, right side, long shot into the glove, he'll let it go behind the boards. Now flipping it up to the top, trying to rebound, and a stick comes out, and they'll have a... Looks like a penalty on Texas there. It does seem to be a penalty. We'll see who goes to the penalty box. Looks like they're calling this one against... George Parker of Texas State. He's only played in two games a season. So the third power play for Texas so far. They haven't been able to capitalize any. Remember that first goal came as soon as the power play ended. And Texas State wins the faceoff, and they'll try and keep it out of the Texas side. Dylan Durham flipping out right side to Justin McGowan. McGowan trying to create some space and some time for them to get through, and it's going to be flipped out from Dominic Girard. James Grachos is also back on the ice. Looks like he's doing just fine. And here comes McGowan, and it's taken up. And now, Texas State with a chance. Crabtree recovers and able to flip it back to the Bobcat zone. Then with complete control, Cal Hughes will just clear it to the opposite side. Recovering Dylan Durham. A minute 20 to play in the first period. About the same amount of time left in the advantage. Texas State able to... Hold on to this one and clear it once again. Texas really struggling in these power plays. I'm not sure if Texas is struggling or if Texas State's just really good at the penalty kill. It's both. And here comes Veneri Chamuru trying to find an open shot. Texas State able to defend quite well. And they'll defend again, clearing it and almost getting a stick on his Justin McGowan, but he can't, and it goes back into the Longhorn end. 40 seconds to play in the first period. What's nice is that Texas has a power play for the rest of the period, so Texas State probably will not be scoring a goal. And Texas State trying to prove Mark Skull wrong as a, they get a chance that Arami takes it, and it's taken back away by Jamuru. Jamuru, they can flip it up to Dole. Dole kicking it back to himself. Oh. It's a huge chip from Kyle Hughes. And that's the second foul they're going to call against Hughes, and they can't believe it. He's going to go right to the penalty box. What a hit by Hughes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, sorry. Boy, yeah, what a hit by Hughes. But the, the reason why they call that penalty is because he led with his shoulder. You can't lead with your shoulder. You just got to just gotta run into him. He, but he led with his shoulder and aimed for that upper body. So that's a, that's a gruesome hit. And just as football is starting to lament about the hits that are turning into penalties, a hockey in the same fashion feels like a little bit of aggression being taken away. But a big hit leads to the penalty, and Texas has even more of an advantage here. Two minutes that will go into the second period. Ten seconds left in this one, though, as Texas tries to get up a shot. Texas State able to clear two seconds, and will he get a chance at it? No. And that's how the first period ends. When we come back in the first period, there'll be a minute 47 left in that penalty, so they have a chance in to start in the second one to take the lead. But right now the score, Texas won, Texas State won here on Texas Student Television. Mark, in this first period, Texas had many chances in the penalty time, but Texas State so good at defense, able to clear. Oh yeah, Texas State, the, the defensemen, the forwards, the centers, they were all able to clear. I don't know, Texas wasn't able to get a good shot in every single power play. So maybe they need to spread things out. I mean, they're not, Texas State's always getting their sticks in the way, and they're just not able to complete passes. It's not really much of like getting shots up. It's just they're not able to get even passes to their teammates. So that's the that's the main problem for Texas right now. They're not able to get complete passes to their teammates in the offensive zone. We haven't heard from Delman either yet for Longhorn. 
Oh, yeah. no, we haven't heard from Delman yet. We haven't heard from... We've basically just heard from Glachos, who's been all over the place. I mean, you saw his goal, his backhanded goal off of a rebound. So he he's probably the main guy for Texas right now. Well, that's how it stands right now. Texas tied with Texas State 1-1. One to one. And, Mark, I ask you, points to the game so far. We led off with Gracho's on our time with the goal. But also, seeing Moreno come through as an option for the Longhorns coming through on that side. So people are able to go around for the Longhorns. But I ask you this, just whenever they can't capitalize on these um, power plays, whenever they are open on the field, that's the time they got their only goal. So the rebounds, the rebounds are partially part of the, how Texas is able to come through and score. Well, the reason why rebounds are so important is because the goalies – well, oftentimes rebounds go to the other side of the net mm -hmm. and the goalie's focused on the other side. So when, the, when the, the puck's on the other side, the goalie's not guarding the other side. So the, like, like we saw earlier in the game, Grouches had a great opportunity to backhand it in and he did. So th that's one reason why they're scoring off rebounds, just because the net is wide open. I'm sure the coaches are probably saying, hey, calm down a little bit. We're trying to win this game. We want to win the battle of the I-35. But Knowing these players, they're probably just going to keep the aggression going and probably maybe even go a little bit farther with some of this aggression because this this is a huge game. and I mean, it's anyone's game at this point, but if Texas is able to capitalize on some of these mistakes that Texas State is making with these penalties, I mean, Texas can run with this game. But the, the reason why I don't know if Texas can win this game is because Texas State, other than their penalties... I mean, I feel like Texas State's definitely dominated this game. I mean, they're always they're always in the offensive zone, and whenever Texas is on a power play, Texas State seems to clear the puck every time. Doesn't even seem like Texas is able to get a great shot up there. And Grancho's one of the players that we were talking about at the very beginning of the game, the pregame. Someone of the people that has to be able to make this change for the Longhorns. The goal he's been already been able to make, but. There's only so much you can do as an individual player. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of fast breaks, a lot of open shots, uh, an open shot taken by Barreno, but just the flow of the offense for the Longhorns just seems a little sketchy at this point. How do you, are you able to recover, be able to flick it around and be able to get some open shots for yourself? Well, one thing that teams can do is a lot of people, they always recognize the goals, the assists, the saves by the goalie, but they don't recognize what doesn't happen, what doesn't go in the stat sheet. You can move without the puck and open things up for some of your other teammates. And Texas, they've just been stationary, it seems like. So if Texas is able to get some players to move around, get other players open, uh, open some open shots, I mean, Texas can definitely take advantage of some of these power play opportunities that they have. I mean, that's the whole thing. They're not able to get any great shots up, and it has a lot to do with the, the passing the puck, but it also to do with people moving around. Mm -hmm. They're not moving. They're, they're just staying stationary. They're staying in one spot. If they're able to move around, open something up, maybe take up some defenders with them, maybe it'll open the shot up for someone else. Right, and hopefully they are, whenever a team is able to look for somebody else, someone else would step up. Now, do you feel like that's someone else on the team, Moreno? Do you think Delman comes through? And who would that be for the long ones? Well, maybe, I mean, we said earlier, Grachos is definitely the guy for this team, but maybe Justin McCowan. I mean, he scored, he's played in 17 games this season. He scored 16 goals, so he's averaging almost one goal a game. So we'd like to see him get involved in this game. All right, and Texas State doing their best to try and stay along with the chance that they have even though it's tied it really does seem that the Bobcats have the momentum in this one they've clearly been able to control most of this game and even though it's tied whenever you're able to say you get all the penalties you want you can't score on us they've got a lot of that so whenever you have that kind of mentality on that end and everything's working out for you so far what do the Bobcats need to do in the second period in order to maintain that or do they let try and I mean they still don't have the lead still one to one so I'm sure they continue to do that but what do you do to take advantage of that against the Longhorns? Well, Texas State, they need to keep the aggression going. You're, you're seeing all this aggression. I mean, we you don't want to be doing all these hard hits and everything, but this aggression is leading them to all these penalty kills and stopping a lot of Texas passes from going through. So if they're able to keep this aggression going and it looks like some, some bunch of Texas players are flustered out there, I mean, Texas State wants to keep it that way. I mean, mm -hmm. Texas State's definitely dominating this game. They're they're having most of their shots. They're they're taking most of the shots in this game. I mean, Kendall Yancey's doing a great job, but Texas State needs to just keep this aggression going without having so many penalties. Because you can't you can't score that much on the penalty kill. It's very hard. I mean, yes, you can score. You can't get a shorthanded goal, but the odds of you scoring a shorthanded goal are very slim. And well, they've been it's not very a close. They've been they've been close a couple times, but. 
I mean, the odds of it happening are very slim. Right, and if they do happen, I imagine we'll have a little post-game uh, skating for <laughs> the Longhorns. We might be able to air. But here are five minutes left in between the periods, first and second. Brooks Cabina here alongside Mark Skull here on TSTV Game Day. Mark, first time on air. Yeah, I'm having a great time. A little nervous, but it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Well, this is our first broadcast of the semester as well. We've got other sports coming up on this way. So funny thing about Mark and I, you know, I didn't even know that you were going to be coming along on this, but we're two Clear Lake guys coming from the same high school. I didn't know you were going to be here. Yeah, and we also had the same piano teacher. We did. <laughs> we did. So if Ms. Piper's out there watching on Texas Student Television, uh, we didn't really choose to stick with music. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, those were the days, man. Those were the days. Do, do you still remember any of that stuff? Some of it. Not not most of it. But, yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. I remember she used to bite her pencils, and we'd always have to use her pencils. <laughs> but that, that was it. That's all I remember. I remember she used to yell at me, too. Not much yelling going on here, so it's a oh, lot okay, nicer. Well, I, I, I'm going to be yelling at you a lot in the second period, I feel. Oh, so okay. I, I can make up for it. It's okay. <laughs> so all that stuff. So that's fine. But you know what? Coming back into Texas, glad to have you here with us. And we, well, we've got a lot of stuff upcoming on Texas Student TV, so that's going to be good. And welcome back to the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. Texas and Texas State as they begin the second period. Texas won, Texas State won. Brooks Cabina here alongside Mark Skull. So we're ready for action. Texas State will be flipping sides with Texas, moving from left to right for you all. So Texas State, you know, tied right now with Texas. Both of us talking about that during the break. Texas State being so aggressive in that first period, and Texas spending so much time on their own zone. We'll see if they're able to change that in action. So, Hallford will face off against Hughes. And Texas wins it on their zone. Back in that. What's interesting about the second period for uh, Texas is that this is the period where they score the least amount of goals. In the th second period, they've scored 21 goals, which is the least amount of goals they scored in the period all season. But their, their opposing teams also score at least uh, the least amount of goals in this period also. Well, Durham's shot went off the helmet of the lines judge, the linesman, and he shook it off, and he's doing fine. And here comes Grachos. He has the goal so far for Texas. Up to Durham, swinging around to McGowan. McGowan. Done. Long shot and wide. The rebound no good from Grachos. Still fighting for it, and Texas State covers it up. And Texas trying to get through to it, but Adair covers it up, and they'll have a face-off on the Bobcat end. We're looking for that aggression, Bark, and there it is to start in the second period. Well, you're going to get aggression on a power play, but Texas had a great opportunity there. The goalie wasn't even in net he was like out next to it they had a great opportunity to score it, but the texas state defenders once again coming in clutch stop being able to stop the uh, the puck uh, texas state down a man from the last period 57 seven seconds left in this power play for texas now a shot wide left side around the boards goes back to durham to flick in and texas state recovers and they're trying to clear a big hit and they're able to get it back towards center ice now gerard taking it Flipping back into his end, trying to delay the time. 39 seconds, and here comes Texas. Grachos, left side, flips, and he scores! Hoffman with the score for Texas, and they take the lead 2-1. to one. Second nine in a row, Hoffman has scored a goal. Great pass by Grachos. That's two points on the night for him. What a goal for the Texas Longhorns. They convert on the power play, and now they have the lead. And the losers last night, 5-3, to three, and Mark, you say, they score the least in the second period. And here they come with the surprise with only two minutes gone in the first period. Life instilled to the Longhorns as the Bobcats take it into their end. Texas was finally able to take advantage of their power play. Finally able to take advantage of the opportunity. It seems like the third time, third or fourth time they've been in the power play this game. Now Heiser trying to take it. Now Arami falls and tries to square the pass. Now Jamaro off the board on the left side. Now Dayton with it, trying to get back into Longhorn in. Longhorns with possession. Grachos flipping it upside. Now with Webb with the shot, and it's blocked by Soden. Soden flipping it right. Bobcats handling it. Now trying to pace themselves. Dayton flipping it back. Now into Webb's stick. Now it's taken. Going to the left. 
Now Danto trying to get it back in right side. Flips it left side, Texas State. Flips it back into the Texas end and they clear. Referee says it hits Texas, he clears off the icing. And Texas State has the time to switch into their line. Texas definitely looks like the more aggressive team coming out in the second period. Texas, Texas State's not able to do as much as they were in the, the first period, and probably because they're a little bit flustered by this goal that was just scored. Maybe a little bit upset, maybe a little bit disappointed. Well, Nixon called off sides, and Texas will switch their line. The referees are talking over something. something. Oh, we'd like to know, wouldn't we? Oh, yeah, that'd be <laughs> great. <laughs> we'll work on that mic for next time. And to challenge, here comes Hallford up against Brett. Brett wins, but goes back to Hallford. Now back into Texas State. Nixon on the left side. Texas recovering, flips it back. And he'll go into the stick of Booth. Back over the right, Dole getting it off the boards, and he clears. Texas State trying to catch on to it, and it's going to say this one flipped out right above the bench, and they'll have a face-off in the neutral zone. So Texas scoring 2-1 to one right in the first minute and a half on a big shot from Halford. And that's where the score stands, Texas 2, Texas State 1, and Texas State trying to recover off of the face-off. Now into the Texas zone. Halford with the goal already. Flips it up to a chasing Durham. Durham against the boards, battling against Bean. Bean back left side. Now it comes up to Nixon. Nixon. Now a two on two. Holweger. Take it right. Holweger tries to flip it side. And right. Too wide for Holweger. Recovers Nixon. Nixon. Brett tries to recover, and Texas trying to cover it up, and they do. A big scramble for it, and they'll call it dead. Trying to split these teams apart. Barney had a few checks today. And on a fight they had to split up early in the first period. Texas State is definitely trying to get this aggression going again. It looks like it's happening a little bit, getting some good opportunities, good looks at the goal. You saw, uh, you saw Ray, Hayden Ray get a great look at the goal, and along with Curtis Holweger. They're definitely playing with more aggression, and that's what they need if they want to tie this game up and may possibly win this game. Well, Holweger... Subbing out. Now a new line for the Bobcats. And checking in is Grachos. He has a goal. And they're actually bringing him out from the ice. Bringing him into the penalty box. Let's see if Texas State will end up taking oh. advantage of this power play opportunity. Well, they're saying that Grachos is an ineligible player. And they've penalized Texas. And they put Halford in the penalty booth. So Grotchus will go back to the bench. And I doubt we'll see him again. <laughs> they try to <laughs> sneak him in now. Texas State with a two-minute power play. Winning it in the Texas end. Now a shot from Adair. Blocked and recovered by Texas State on the rebound. Dayton can't get it through. Texas trying to clear. And they do back into, their own, into the Bobcat zone. Soden waiting for it, or covering Adair. Behind the crease. Four minutes gone in the second period. Now racing, Gerard. Gerard with a shot, and it's blocked by Kendall. Kendall recovering. Now back up to Hughes. Hughes trying to figure it back to Adair. Adair with a chasing McGowan. McGowan trying to flip it up. Now back behind the goal. Now recovered from Booth as he tries to clear. And it goes over the glass hitting the net. And we'll have a face-off on the Longhorn end. Normally that would be a penalty if someone hit the puck that high, but the ref said it was deflected, so that's why there was no penalty. With a minute 15 left on the power play, Halford waiting for the Longhorns. Texas State trying to tie this game. Now for the face-off comes Arami. And Texas State winning, recovers in their own zone. Parker puts it up to center ice. Dayton out at the blue zone. Nixon takes it around the board, trying to flip it around. And he's caught in between by the Longhorn defenders. Sticking Hill. And they 
Called a foul, looks like it's going against Texas State. A lot of penalties in this game, Brooks. It shows how competitive this game is going uh, and how desperate these teams are to win this game. Well, they've called it against Texas here on Hill. Hill with the, seems to be a slash from what I saw. But now Texas down two men. And one minute left already in the last penalty. So now a 6-4 advantage for Texas State to try and tie this one up. Texas trying to clear. Moreno able to get a stick on it. Back to Dayton. Dayton flips it right. Now back into the hands of Arami trying to clear. Back into Ray. Ray shot, fired, blocked. Kendall. Kendall playing so well in this game against this, these shots. And a, a rebound attempt for the shot from Jamaro. And he wasn't able to get it clear. Now against the boards. Ray trying to fight for it. Clearing it up to the top, the 6-4 advantage. Here comes Parker. Parker, a long shot blocked by Kendall. And the Longhorns able to clear. Kendall's doing a great job. He's only allowed one goal this game, and it was early in the first period. He's been nothing but a, a brick wall ever since. Larson with a big shot. Now they have the two on two. Backing up Hughes. Hughes gets back up to Larson. Back to Hughes down low. Now Parker trying to shot, and it's blocked by Kendall. The rebound, not on recovery is Gerard. Gerard trying to flick after it, and a glove is put on by Kendall, and they'll call whistle the play dead. And the first penalty is now up, so now a 6-5 advantage for Texas State as a 5-4 a advantage for Texas State. They flip it down. Still trying to work around the side. Adair, back, long shot, blocked from Webb. Webb now has a two-on-one. Webb, shot, high. And Texas State brings it back. Now they've got the three-on-two. And here comes Hughes, trying to recover. Flips it, shot, up and wide. What a save there by Ken uh, Kendall. He didn't have much of a... Opportunity to block that shot, but he was able to block it anyways. Hughes with the shot, it goes off the net, back behind. Crowd gets into it though. 10 seconds left in the power play. Hughes trying another shot, and it gets blocked by Kendall. Now coming around the side, Klein. With one second, now the penalty is over, and Texas clears. Another brutal hit by a Texas State player on number 25 for the Texas team. This, Texas State's definitely not stopping their aggression in this one. Well, the Texas State caught the Longhorns in their time to transition, and they say they didn't give them enough time, and they'll have a chance to come back, and they'll face off in the neutral zone. So Texas bringing in a new line after the penalty ended. Now Texas State advancing it too far. What a great job by Kendall to be able to limit these shots on goal from this Texas State team during a five on three power play. So Kendall gets it back. Now Longhorns back at full strength. Here comes Gracho. It's a long shot and picked up by so Soden. And flips around behind the crease. Longhorns trying to get after it. Two on, here comes Gracho. Flips it right side, trying to get it in. And big space right in there. Trying to clear out to where they can have an open shot. Block shot. Back to Gracho. Gracho tries to get on stick on it. It's stolen by Arami. Arami in transition. The three on two. Flips it back up, and here comes Dayton. And Dayton trying to take it back and flee up an open shot. Flips it left to Adair. Adair, nice move, flips it in, and it's blocked back by Kendall. Back behind the crease, and the Longhorns able to recover, and he'll try and clear. Back to center ice, recovered by Klein. Klein going on, a shot, long shot from Spielvogel, and it goes wide. Delayed penalty coming up on... Texas State, it looks like. Now Texas State trying to advance the puck. Going out on the backside. Texas State recovered. Smith taking up to the top. Side. Oh. Long shot. So and it's blocked by Kendall. Sorry, delayed penalty on Texas State. They're on Texas it. is able to recover, and they bring it out of the end, and they'll call it delay as the goal was loosed. And they'll bring it back in. Texas had a six and uh, Texas State had a six on five advantage there because since it was the late penalty, the Texas State goalie was allowed to leave the net. So 
Texas State had a 6-5 and five advantage, but they were unable to take it, uh, advantage of that opportunity, and now we have a Texas player in the penalty box. Yeah, they've called Smith into the booth, so now another penalty against the Longhorns, and Texas State not able to take advantage of the first one. They try the second. Maybe the reason why Texas doesn't score a lot of goals in the second period is because maybe they're a little bit more aggressive in the second period. We've seen three penalties now in this period, so on Texas. Now Crabtree wins the face-off, and now Gerard trying to hold on to it and clearing, trying to clear his Dante. Now back up to Crabtree trying to find a shot, and it's flipped away from McGowan and clears to the Longhorn end. Chasing after is Dante. Oh. Another shot, and it's up and high with a as Soden was away from the goal. What a great opportunity for Texas there. Soden was away from the goal and had a great chance for a, a wide open net goal, just a little high on the shot. Gerard checks, he takes it back. Gerard, Gerard with the left, and he can't get an open shot, tries to flip it and wide again past Kendall. Texas State still holding on to possession. They've had the advantage, and Texas able to clear. Larson. Flips it right to Parker. And Texas clearing again back to the Bobcats side. Soden will pick it up and wait for the charging Heiser, and he covers it up. Nine minutes gone in the second period. Texas owns the lead 2-1 to one and have a minute left in the power play for Texas State. We saw the Texas State goalie there, Soden, chirping a little bit at the Texas player who looked like he uh, skated some ice into his eye. So... Texas State is definitely a little bit upset with that play. Well, here comes Durham, and they try and win. But it's recovered by Adair. Adair clearing it back up to the Longhorn end. Dayton, the transition. They have a three-on-three. Three. Dayton trying to get rid of it, and it's taken away from Jamura. Now back to Texas State. Dayton with on the left side. Clears it back up to the top to Chase. Chase back to Dayton. Chase, shot, right side, blocked by Kendall. Now flipping around the boards into the stick of Dayton. Dayton back up to Chase. Long shot, try to clear. Rebound attempt. Texas recovers, and it goes left side. to Rami with it. Rami trying to find a spot, gets it into a blocking. Ray, Ray trying to flip it in. A good defensive effort by the Longhorns, and they flip it out and clear. What a great save by Kendall there. That puck looked like it bounced in several different weird positions, and he was able to still block it. With the and, and advancing hard is Brett, and Brett takes it around the boards. Now Boo trying to clear. And a stick going from Adair trying to catch on to it at center ice, but he can't get to it. It goes back to Texas State. And the penalty is over, and Texas back to full strength and recover. What a great penalty kill by Texas there. They're really playing with a lot more aggression this period, and it's and definitely showing. Alford leading over to Moreno, and he can't get it through. A tremendous effort from Soden with the save. And it seemed like a perfect shot coming from Moreno, and the defense from Texas State holds on to keep Texas from going up 3-1. to one. Now Here comes Grachos to face off against Brett. Texas State wins. Now Hellweger with it, trying to take it into the Longhorn end. Now at the blue line, charging around the boards, trying to find an open shot. Hellweger around the bend. Comes back up to the top to try and get it at the end. And charge against Texas State. And Longhorns have it behind the crease. Right back out, Holweger. Holweger fighting for it, trying to find a clear open space. Gets back. Now it's stolen by Texas. Texas with a little bit of advantage and a great defensive play from Crabtree to clear it. Longhorns holding on to a 2 1 lead. Uh, here comes McGowan. McGowan left side, trying to get it back to the trailing Grachos. Grouch is back to the top, Holweger able to keep it for the Bobcats. Now in transition, Ray to the blue line. And two on two, gets it back. Holweger tries to get the shot, can't get a hold of it with a stick, and it's cleared from Texas. So you'll, no icing called on that play. Official says that it touched a Texas State defender. And here comes Hill all around the side. Now Hughes leads, and they've called the play dead as the goal was loosened behind Soden. They'll have a face off on the Bobcat end. Bobcats trail two to one against Texas here on Texas Student Television. Texas has been much more aggressive in the second period, charging ahead 
And they've had a couple of penalties the Bobcats have and haven't been able to take advantage of them as much. So we've seen both of these team, teams play very well when it comes to defense against the power play. And we've, we've talked about both goalies being, well, we've talked about David Kendall being a great goalie for Texas tonight, but you, we, have, we have overlooked Samuel Sodden, who's done a great job as well. Now charging is Gerard. Gerard trying to find a shot, and Kendall able to cover up nicely. Now back up, and Longhorn's clear. Now chasing back is Parker. Parker facing off against Garfunk, oh, who has a big hit. Now Danto trying to get through, fighting for it against the wall. And Durham and Brett fighting. Now it's Texas State able to sustain possession. Now it goes up to Hughes. Hughes a two on two. And he goes for the trailing Crabtree. Crabtree goes outside and Kendall covers up to stop play. Looks like Kendall's getting into it with one of those Texas State players. I mean, you're going to see, usually you see the, the forwards or the centers getting into it, but now you're seeing the goalie get into it with one of the centers and the official has to keep got calm Crabtree Kendall away got is trying to keep going after Kendall and I know Kendall is not doing too much to keep him from coming at him I know well, I know we can't hear what they're saying but I'm sure they're all chirping at each other during this it's game very chippy in this game a couple of big hits from Texas State in the first period a couple of fights almost ensued and they put them away so far I'm, I'm surprised we haven't seen any gloves dropped and they've actually sent Parker or Crabtree to the penalty box. So Texas now has an advantage, two minutes to try another power play and has a chance to increase their lead. Great opportunity for Texas here to increase their lead. They really want to win this game. This is probably a really crucial possession for them. Here comes Halford. That's one by Texas State. Halford still pressing. Oh, here comes Gracho. Gracho's back to the top. Durham. Durham thinking about the shot. Beyond takes a shot and it's a goal! On the rebound! 11 seconds into the power play. What a goal by Durham. Looks like Durham was there for the shot. And now the Longhorns lead it 3 to 1. Samuel Son had couldn't do anything on that play. That was just a just had a funny bounce and just found its way into the back of the net. What a great goal by Dylan Durham, the senior of Colleyville, Texas. Well, with the goal, the power play ends. Now Texas State back at full force, and Texas alive at three to one. And Texas wins, Booth brings it up. Now into the stick of Jamuro, and Mark has to duck out of the way. A big hit coming from Alami. Right at us, man, that was crazy. And coming back around the boards, Texas State taking it. And here comes Alami, Alami clearing. Trying to get a shot off and does, but blocked by Kendall. Now fighting it right behind the crease. Trying to find a spot, get back into this lead. 7.15 left in the second period. Back up to the top to, to Adair, and it's wide. Ray, a long shot and blocked by Kendall. Texas State. A lot of two shots already in this, and Texas able to recover defensively, and now they transition back to center ice. Now to the blue line. Now it's taken, and then they'll call offsides. Grachos was ahead of the puck on that one. That's why they called the offsides on that play. Uh, Grachos trying to stay onside and try to get back in time, but communication lacking, and Texas will have to face off at center ice. It's crazy what, how different these teams are playing in this, this period. We saw Texas State come out with a ton of aggression in the first period, and Texas, which Texas lacked, and now it seems like it's the up, uh, opposite way. Now well, Halford taking it back behind the boards. Well, Chase trying to clear for Texas State. Parker flips up, and Texas able to recover at center ice. And they've called a foul against Texas. And they've I believe they've got Webb for high sticking. Another penalty for Texas this, half, uh, this period. Texas State has a, another opportunity to score on the power play. Let's see if they can take advantage of this opportunity. Texas State has down two. They'd like to take advantage of something at this point. And with two minutes gone, Longhorns took care of their power play on the last chance. We'll see if the Bobcats do the same. Lots of penalties for both teams. And a big shot coming off of the face-off, and it goes wide. 
Al Larson getting on the end. Fighting for it right behind it. And the rebound and he scores! Both teams have scored really quick on these last two power plays. Texas scored with 11 seconds, and now Texas State just scored with 15 seconds into the power play. Both of these teams know that this is an important game, and they're both showing it and trying to take advantage on these power plays. And it looks like they're going to award that one to Gerard on the rebound. Gerard able to bring Texas State within one. Right now the score, Texas three, Texas State two, 6-18 to play in the second period. And Texas back at full strength now. Life to the Bobcats as they're able to recover. Now into the Longhorn end. Chasing now is Gerard. Gerard with the score and aggression coming right after it. Booth flips it up to Dole. And goes back into center ice. That's Durham. Durham trying to take his shot. And he flips it around, gives himself some more time. Texas State trying to clear. Now charging off is Halford. Halford into the middle, and now Texas State has some advantage. Hughes charging, flips it back to the trailing Gerard. Gerard can't handle it, and Texas is able to clear. Back to center eyes, Halford. He has a two on two. Gerard looks shaken up on Halford that play. with the shot and wide. Gerard twisted his leg in a funny fashion there, and he's definitely getting his leg checked out right now by the doctors. Now Texas State coming, Crabtree. Flips it to the middle, and Texas is able to recover defensively as Texas State produces a new line. And after, right. after that power play goal by Texas State, you're definitely seeing a lot more aggression out of Texas State and a lot less aggression out of Texas. Five minutes to play in the period. Texas trying to clear. Back to the blue line as Klein ducks away from a big hit, and Texas is able to recover. So we have to the middle, Texas State able to get a puck on it. And it seems like this one might be called for a delayed penalty. But it is called off. Texas State trying to recover, get it back into center ice. Flips it to the Longhorn end, and a new line comes through. No icing. Now Texas charging, trying to gain advantage. Flips it up to the side. Texas State recovers. Shoving going on between the two as a big hit goes up against a big shot coming from Ray. Another attempt to hit from Chase as they're trying to invigorate this team. Flip up to the middle. Texas State now charging. Chase with the shot blocked by Kendall. Texas State has been in the offensive zone it seems like every single second ever. Now Ray trying to rebound and it goes wide. Grachos trying to clear for the Longhorns. Flips it up to McGowan. McGowan flips it off the glass. Clears it behind the boards and behind the Texas State goal. Here comes Chase. Chase gives it up to Brett. Brett flipping around the boards, gives it up to Spielvogel. And Longhorns try and pursue. Here comes Heiser, Jamur, and a whistle blown. I feel another, another foul has been called. <laughs> Looks like just the puck just went out of play. Doesn't look like there's any penalty. The puck has gone out of play in Texas State. Comes back into their own zone. Longhorn's trying to flip it up, and it's recovered. Here comes Brett. Brett in transition. They've got the two on one. Ray, right side, shot wide. Flicking up Dayton. And it's recovered from Moreno. Moreno trying to clear for the Longhorns. They have a one point lead with three minutes to play. Brett had a great look there with Ray, but he just overshot him. Well, Hill flips it up a little too far out of the reach of Gar Garfano. And Texas State able to go. A wide shot, a great pass to Gerard. Gerard on the shot, and it's high. Another great opportunity for Texas State to take advantage on a uh, a fast break, but they were able, unable to take advantage. Now here comes Gerard again. Gerard flips it left. Gerard is shot, and it's blocked by Kendall. What a move by Gerard on that play. He went outside, back inside, and tried to backhand it top shelf on glove side on two Kendall. And a, two and a half to play in the period. Longhorn's trying to recover. Flips it into the Bobcat end so they can get a new line in. And here comes Hughes 
And he can't continue into the Longhorn zone. Back into the Bobcat end. Here comes Durham, and he's fighting for the puck up against with Parker. Parker tapping it in, and they're able to kick it out. Back out in front of the crease, and Crabtree able to go back towards the Longhorn side. Arami now. Arami swinging it. A shot wide. Back in. Texas trying to recover. Going up to the top. Here comes Adair. Adair flipping it across the boards, and Dole has it. Dole trying to clear for the Longhorns. Flips it back into Halford on the hit. Halford kicking it up. Now Dole. Dole back to Halford. Halford to center ice. Halford at the blue line. Trying to take a shot. Dukes goes up. Shot blocked by Soden. Longhorns still have it. Back to the top to Hill. Hill fighting for possession. Gets it in to Halford. Halford trying to duck it in from behind, and the Bobcats able to pull it away. Now here comes Arami. Arami falls with the puck outside. He's trying to hold on to it, and they've called time. As it's like they, a delayed penalty. The goalie was trying to go back. The Texas State goalie was trying to go back to the bench so it could have a six-on-five opportunity. Mm. looks like uh, number two, Cameron Booth, will be going to the penalty box for the Texas Longhorns. That's the second penalty of the period against Texas. And Texas State able to pull within one in this period during one of those. So now another chance as Booth goes in. Booth, one of the big players, the uh, player from Buffalo, New York, seven points on the season as 21 games played. And Texas trying to clear it against Texas State as they have the power play. Texas State looking to score with one minute left in this period and a power play for the rest of the period. No Parker. Minute left. A Larson shot wide. Back up to the top, Parker flips it right. Now shot from Hughes, and it's banked from Danto, and Danto takes it to center ice. Now Longhorns have the advantage, he decides to clear. 33 seconds to play in the period. Texas State trying to tie the game. Now it's flipped up to Hughes, and Hughes loses it. And McGowan able to clear it for Texas. 14 seconds to play in the period. Parker taking up. Loses the puck. Chasing after is Jamuro. And they're fighting for the puck. Two seconds left. Texas State trying to take a shot. They decide to stay with it. And that's how the period ends. The Bobcats able to pull within one as Texas scores. Two in this period so they took the lead and withhold the lead now three to two in the game so Texas able to be more aggressive in that second period this whole season the second period has been one where they struggled to score they're able to get two here so a lot of stuff going on here for Texas but the Bobcats they were the ones being aggressive in the first and we were always one we were asking ourselves when was Texas going to be able to start pulling that through it seems that they have yeah, they definitely have. I mean, you see them score two goals in a period where they never score goals, or not, well, they do score goals, but not as much. So you're seeing that they're definitely coming out with aggression. And then after Texas State scored their power play goal, you saw them come out with aggression too. So it looks like when teams score their goals, that's when they're getting a lot of aggression, and that's when they're building up uh, their momentum. Right, and watching in the first period, we were able to see how Grachos was able to score a goal for Texas, and we were talking about who else could step up. We got a chance to see that. Oh yeah, we saw uh, we saw Halford score a goal, and I'm, I'm I don't really remember who scored the other goal for Texas, but I mean you're seeing a lot Durham. of the guys, Durham scored the goal for Texas. <laughs> so Halford and Durham were able to score two goals. It's okay. Sorry, uh, my bad. Uh, Halford were able to flip in a goal for Texas during a power play. Durham able to get on a rebound. So such a good effort from Texas in this offense so far, being highly aggressive. And Texas State able to take advantage of the power play. So both. Offense is really clicking in this second period. And Texas State lying off a little bit of the hits because those were counting in a lot of penalties in that first period, creating a lot of opportunities for the Longhorns. The Longhorns didn't really need too many power plays to get a chance at scoring in this one. Well, they actually they, they scored on uh, both of their power plays in this <laughs> period. Um, you saw that they scored in the first uh, 
the first uh, power play of the period because they were that's how they started the period, and then they score in the first 11 seconds of their next power play. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely taking. I mean, last period we saw them not take advantage of these power plays, and now this period they are. So it's great to see that out of a team, and it's great to see Texas State also take advantage of their power plays now because it seemed like before they were not taking advantage of these power plays at all. So we see the coach talking over the officials. This one's been a heated battle so far between the Bobcats and Longhorns, and we'll see how influential these officials' calls in the third period will be in such a close one as this. Last time we saw Texas take an early lead, and then the Bobcats scored many straight and then Texas had to come back in the third to tie they won in overtime and we see Texas State perhaps able to pull back in in the third period but what would Texas State need to do they've been so aggressive in this first period able to take a lead Longhorns able to come back from that and this one Texas State able to take advantage of the power play I mean the two all three goals in this second period have come from power plays and I mean with all of what's going on between the, these officials it's been a system where they've had to rely on that. Why do you think that is? Is their regular offense, the defenses from these two teams have been just too good for these offenses to do well on their own? Well, I'd have to agree with that. I mean, you've seen the goaltenders, Kendall and Sodden, do really well. I mean, the goals that Sodden that let uh, go through the net or go into the back of the net weren't really his fault. They were just freak goals. I mean, you saw just had funny bounces. I mean, there's nothing Sodden could have done to do that, mm -hmm. uh, to defend that, but... I mean, a lot of it's just luck on these power play opportunities because they're just getting some shots that no, wouldn't normally go in. They're just lucky bounces. Mm -hmm. So you, what Texas and Texas State both need to do, they just need to keep, keep being aggressive without getting penalties because we saw Texas or Texas State being a little bit aggressive and they got in penalties and Texas was able to score on the penalties. And then uh, Texas State was able to score on the penalty uh, power play as well. All right, and we are right now going to, Kick it over to our rinkside reporter, Shelby Hodges, with the interview between the second and third period. Okay, Brooks, Mark, I'm here with Coach Aubrey Berkowitz. And Coach, it was obviously a very tight game up to this point, but what are you going to tell your team that they need to fix so that you guys can win the third period? We just got to stay out of the penalty box. I mean, we're taking our own chances away from us. Five on five, we're dominating the game, but we can't afford to take stupid penalties that are selfish penalties. I mean. The tripping call at the end there, we know better than that. You know, we know better than to take penalties like that. Great. And which players do you think are going to make those big plays this last period of the game? I mean, I'm really looking for our captain, Joe Halford, to really step up and be a leader again. He was a leader yesterday, scored in the third period. Dylan Durham, number eight, he's another guy that we're looking to get some offense from. And just the seniors in general, I mean, this is the last time they're going to get to play Texas State. This is their last chance, and we've got one period to go. And with such a physical, physical game going on, how do you tell your players to deal with that aspect? Hockey's a physical sport. I mean, you've got tons of padding on. Just suck it up and just go make a play. I mean, we've got guys, we've got big guys too. Everyone's hitting, everyone's playing hard, and let's not make it easy on the referees. You know, let's play hard, play as a team, take some hits, and, you know, see how it goes. And hopefully if we can stay out of the box, like I said earlier, we're going to win this game. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thank and you. we'll good luck in this next period. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Brooks, Mark, back to you guys. And from what you've been seeing from this rink side, this crazy game with the three goals happening in the second period, I've really been thinking about this whole entire game. We've been able to discuss it ourselves. But with whatever's going on without this game, I'd really like to hear some of her thoughts. But, Mark, before we kick it over to her, you know, there are some things that I wonder from Shelby. We're going to actually go ahead and talk to her right now. Shelby, thinking from the side that you're in on your thoughts for this game, what have you been thinking so far from what you've seen tonight? Bring it back. Thanks, Shelby. And, you know, there are some ways that we can think about that, and I think Sometimes no words speak for the most words, and that's for some part of that. And, you know, maybe 
she needs to see more in order to hear more. And I, I feel like I need to see more, too, from Texas and Texas State. Texas State, obviously, coming in and getting a shot and goal, getting many chances at this with the power play, is able to get in through Texas State being so aggressive throughout it. Was, I mean, we've seen so much coming from um, all, all this team. Just who do you feel like for Texas State needs to pick it up in the third period in order to come back in this one? Well, Texas State, the guys who need to pick it up are uh, obviously – Gerard, Ray, and Arami. Those are the main uh, guys. These are the guys that have been leading this team all season. You've seen yeah. and Gerard able to get that goal in the second period. Gerard being so aggressive in the second part, getting a couple of shots. And Kendall's been so fantastic. as uh, Also, a soda throughout this period. So both these goalies playing so well against this aggression. So feeling that from Arami, too. And like we said earlier, the second period is normally a period where not that many teams are scoring goals for Texas or Texas's opponents. But the third period is the period where both, te uh, both teams score the most goals. So maybe we'll see a – I mean, we saw a lot of goals that period, but maybe we'll see a lot more this next coming period. Right, and that's what we'll have to look forward to. And you too, as they come up into the third period. So we're going to take a break here on Texas Student Television. Actually, Shelby's back for her thoughts, and we'll go ahead and get it back, back to her. What do you think needs to happen in that third period for you guys? Uh, we should keep moving the puck, uh, keep our composure, uh, keep poised play, and uh, work in their zone more than anything. That's probably the biggest thing is get down in their zone, play the game in their end, and uh, don't worry about too much other than that. Okay, you guys have been playing great defense on this side of the rink. What are you going to do to keep that up? Keep taking the body, keep skating fast, and uh, make sure we're putting uh, a guy on the body every time. That's about it. I mean, that's just basic hockey, and that's what we're going to keep doing. And then for Texas State, what's the biggest challenge that you guys have gotten from them so far? They're a physical team and they move the puck pretty well. Uh, I think they come into the zone and they're breaking into the zone really well. Uh, they throw their bodies around, which is pretty good. Um, and they've been challenging. They've been a good team. They skate well, and uh, it's been a good test for us. But uh, we're up 3-2. We're going to keep going. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, Brooks, Mark, it's back to you guys. Thanks, Shelby. And as we hear from a couple of interviews from Shelby Hodges, thanks for bringing those to us here on Texas Student Television. Right now the score, 3-2, to the Longhorns lead as they head into the third period. We'll be back in five minutes here on Texas Student Television. Stay tuned. And welcome back to Texas Student Television. Air Texas State trailing the Longhorns 3-2 to as they enter the third period. Brooks has been here alongside Mark Skull as we come through the break and we like hearing from everyone and no one all at the same time. Of course, it's great. To, <laughs> <laughs> it's great to hear from hey, everyone. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> it's great to hear from everyone. If they're speechless, if they have a lot to say, it's great to hear from everybody. Right, Shelby, uh, yeah, I, mean, we, I, we, I forgot to introduce uh, her cousin and, you know, it's, it's a long time and before we'll see Casper again, but every time... Every now and then he'll come in on Texas doing television. And you see the Longhorns coming out of their locker room with a 3-2 to two lead. You see it with uh, all that's been going on for them. They've been working quite well. Halford, the player, with the goal last. And also uh, getting in was Durham. And those two players, the change for the Longhorns that they came through to go up with the lead. But on the other end, Gerard the one with the chance to score in the power play for Texas State, and they come on. So we see a lot of this going on through for Texas. And right there, the man for the Longhorns, Kendall, doing so much on the defensive side. David Kendall this year, 4-1, and one, trying to make his record 5-1, and one, a crucial mark for the Longhorns as they move into the final spot of this season and try to tie up the season series between the Bobcats and the Longhorns. Bobcats currently hold that one against them so far and we have said in the pregame and also in the first period that this is the I-35 rivalry and whoever wins gets to put up a toll booth. Oh yeah, it all comes down to this period <laughs> right here. Not really, so don't be too concerned about all that. But if you did end up putting a toll booth, maybe they can put in a couple of more highways. That would be nice for be nice. Austin and San Marcos. I'm sure they'll be very happy. But people keep turning down everything, so... We're not going to get too political here on Texas Student Television. This is hockey. This is hockey. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> but Texas comes in, and Booth still has 48 seconds left in his penalty, so Texas State starts off with the power play here to start the third period. Texas State takes it on their own end. Down one. They have 20 minutes to try and bring this one back in to take the season series. I'll bring out in a shot, goes off the post from Kendall. 
up on the right side. So Crabtree recovers, flips it right left to Parker. Back up to Crabtree, up at the blue line. And a good defensive play from Moreno, able to get a stick on it, pushing them back into the Bobcat zone. They flip back to center ice and to the stick of Hughes. Back in the Bobcat end. Thing at center ice, now charging is Gerard. Gerard, a goal already, trying to take himself a nice move, flips it over and scores! A big shot coming from Hughes, and the game is tied! Talk about coming out with aggression. Texas State has shown it in the first period. Now they're showing the third period. Scoring on the power play with two sec with only two seconds left on the power play. Able to take advantage of that power play with the clock winding down. Gerard beautifully dicing up the defense of the Longhorns and kicking it to a wide open Hughes to score and make this game tied. Only less than a minute to play in the third period have gone by and still had a chance to take advantage of the power play, and they have. Now the Longhorns back at full strength, and they try and take the lead once again. Bobcats win, and they force it into the Longhorn zone. Kendall giving up three goals today, and has four and one record at the Bobcats are trying to make four and two in the Longhorn zone. Pushing it back in, pressing. Here comes Grachos. Grachos into the middle, trying to get into the Bobcat end. Now it's center eyes, flipping back to the Longhorn end. One around to this side. Here comes Psyche. Psyche on the left side, trying to free it, and it's taken up. Longhorn's trying to clear. Now Valentin. Valentin getting a hard press, a big hit coming from Arami. That one is legal, and it goes back on the side. That glass pressed up against the fans who were leaning against it. And another hit coming on the near side. Texas State going into the aggression that they had in the first period. Delayed penalty on Texas State right here. McGowan, McGowan tried to get a shot, but he slipped there, and that delayed penalty that Mark has called seems to go against Texas State and the hit from Gerard. So Gerard, one of the big playmakers today, had a goal in the second period and a nice assist on the third. Now the Longhorns have a chance to have a power play and try and regain the lead. Texas, Texas really needs to take advantage of this opportunity. We've already seen Texas State come out with a bunch of aggression, scoring that first goal of the period. Tied game. Now Texas has a chance to take that lead and possibly win the I-35 battle. Moreno facing off against Hughes in the Bobcat end. All tied at three. Longhorns will have five minutes on this penalty. Now well, they've decreased it to four. So a long time for the Longhorns to take advantage of this one. Now flips up. Danto with it. Out to the left side, chasing after his Dole. Texas State trying to clear. Now Hill has it. Hill taking around the right side. Flips it up to the top. Dalton with it. Left side. Dole chasing after. Flipping around the boards. Into the stick of Moreno. Moreno flipping it back up top to Dole, and Dole was not in position. It flips all the way back to the Longhorn end. 3.30 still in the power play with only two and a half gone in the first period. I mean, third period. Oh, bringing up Jamura. Into the blue line. Texas State swiping. Jamura gets by. Stops, hesitates, flips left side. Can't complete the pass, and Texas State clears. And by clear, I mean almost hitting their own bench. And that'll be outside, and they'll have a face-off in the neutral zone. Now, a lot of penalties in this game. This one, a very tough one. They're having to be on the defensive side for four minutes. It's crazy. You don't want to, especially in the third period with a tie game, you don't want to be having a penalty kill for four minutes. Now a with long three minutes shot left. from Durham, blocked. Texas definitely needs to take advantage of this opportunity because they have they have a four a total of four minutes to, to score a goal with a five on four advantage. If they don't take advantage here, it, it's a bad chance they ever will. Gracho is trying to split through and loses the puck and Texas State clears. Penalty now down to 245. Texas trying to take the lead once again. And they call. Icing on the call. They'll bring it back to the Longhorn end. So Texas trying to take advantage of this. And Mark, you mentioned how Texas State can't put themselves in position like this. A big four-minute penalty that they had to make up for. Now the icing able to put Texas State in position to maybe recover. 
Well, and this game, right now, it's going to come down the goalie play in this period. We've already seen Kendall give up a goal. I mean, whoever, d whoever, whichever goalie stays like a brick wall but for the remainder of the period will end up winning this game. Uh, McGowan taking it into the Bobcat in. Flinging it to the top to Halford. Back to get McGowan. Flips back to Halford on the boards. Trying to free up some space. Now a long shot from McGowan that's blocked by Soden. Now Danto trying to fight it against Ray. Ray trying to poke it out. And now over to help out is McGowan. And flips back up to the top. Halford up to Gracho at the blue line. And right to McGowan. Back to Gracho. A long slap shot. Didn't the Texas State Bobcats block it and put it back to the Longhorn end. New lines come in and mark that long shot. They haven't been able to free up some space. Texas State being quite conservative. Texas State's done pretty well in this penalty kill, and they've already killed about 2 minutes and 30 seconds of this penalty kill. 1 minute and 30 seconds left to go in the penalty and kill. They're able to clear again as the Texas line transitions. Now Heiser in for Texas. And Heiser trying to free up some spot with the charging Brett. Heiser with it again. 15 minutes to play in the game. A minute 14 left on the penalty. Texas State doing a fine job keeping Texas from taking advantage of it and taking the lead once again. Now back behind the goal. Texas trying to free up some space. Bobcats pressing defense. Now a shot and can't get it around for Moreno. Delayed penalty on Texas State on tw number 23, pa George Parker. Well, another man down. They've been being... Doing so well on defense, it'd be a problem for them to have another man go down as the pass to Grachos isn't on point enough. As Grachos gets to the left side, a shot goes wide. Six on four advantage for Texas right now. And now Texas State will have a, a five on three disadvantage. So now that delayed penalty has been called. And into the penalty box goes Parker. So Parker on the season. Uh, an influential player for them now with two men in there. They have 34 seconds and this advantage for Texas increases. So now I feel like Texas more than ever will be more aggressive. And what do you do now with a five thir with this advantage now? I mean, you got you got a score here. I mean, you've had you've had been on a power play for it's going to be a 5 minute and 30 second power play uh, advantage. You got to you got to take advantage of it. Rochelle's with the shot blocked. And now charging over is Durham. Durham has the numbers, and now take it away. A free lane for Arami. Arami taking it inside. Arami can't get it through, and it's picked up and it by did. Kindle. A delayed penalty on Texas there on Durham. I mean, he, that's what he had to do. It looks like a hooking there on Durham to yeah. on Arami to prevent that goal from happening. I mean, that was a smart play by Durham, but now Texas's advantage is going to go away. Well, despite... The open opportunity and the foul. Arami feels like he should have had that goal. A wide open shot for him. But now, Arami has a chance on the penalty to put, tech, put Texas State in the lead for the first time since the first period. As the captain of this team, I'm sure the coach of the Texas State Bobcats doesn't want anyone else taking this penalty shot. And here it comes, David Kendall awaiting. Arami, left side. Arami tries it through, and it's picked up from Parker. And K David Kendall able to secure the spot and keep the lead where it is, tied at three apiece with 14 and a half to play in the third period. David Kendall was really excited after saving that, that puck, and you saw him come over to our camera and give it a little thumbs up. Well, he's very aware of the eyes upon him. And Texas State unable to take advantage of that penalty. Now still tied at three. And still down two men. Ten seconds to play until they recover to at least one down. Well, here comes Gracho, sent to the middle, to the blue line. Looks on the right side. Tries to clear it towards, towards the goal. Chasing after and clearing is Gerard back in the Texas end. Now they recover a man. Now only a one man just advantage for Texas State. 111 to play in the power play for Grachos. Grachos leading on the right side. Grachos on the right side. Flips it back. Gets it into Bolden. 
And to the boards. Grouch is trying to get the puck out, but Adair fighting for it and pushing it back behind. Grouchos, Halford going in. Texas State charging. Adair trying to clear, and he gets it up to Gerard. Gerard on the two on one. Gerard with the shot, and it goes up high, and he's knocked hard from McGowan. Gerard a foul on McGowan, so now Texas will be down a man. Gerard really wanted that shot, and you saw him flip around. It just shows how much, how, with how much force he was going into that with that shot. Unfortunately, he was able to, unable to put it in the back of the net. Gerard coming right out of the penalty and having a chance to make his impact right away. And Texas State winning the faceoff. And Heiser flipping it to the left side. And now Kendall with it. It's a back end. 30 seconds to go in the power play for Texas. Texas trying to take advantage. Dole can't take the transition. And out on his own blue line. Up to the center ice. Now 22 seconds left. Now it seems that Jamuro has a chance. And Dole takes it at the top. Swings it around the boards. Back behind. 14 seconds to go in the advantage. Now flipping up. And Texas State able to try and clear. But he can't. It bounces off of Hughes. Now Heiser fighting for it. Gets it in to Moreno. Moreno flipping around side, and it comes right in front of Soden, and he covers it up. Right as the power play expires. Perfect time oh, for Texas a, State. A big hit coming from Hughes. And it seemed like it was after, and out comes the mouthpiece of Heiser. And it was a little bit after the whistle, but no foul has been called. And Texas recovers in. Actually, they do. They bring in Heiser over and subbing him out at least to try and keep Texas State in a position where they aren't putting themselves into even more trouble in penalties. But the game still remained tied. No team able to take advantage of their sides yet. Texas had a great opportunity there. It's a shame that they weren't able to score with a, a five minute and 30 uh, one man advantage. Well, they had two a man advantage at a certain point. It's Texas State starting to clear. Now back to full strength. Now here comes Texas. Young trying to clear. Now back on his own end. Danto going after. Back around, trying to get it up. Texas State in control, fighting it against the wall. Now, Larson. Larson brings it on the right side. Arami fighting for the possession. And Danto back up. Now Dayton with it, trying to find an open lane. Pushes it towards the near side, trying to flip it in. And he gets it into Ray, who puts it into the back of the net. And now the Bobcats lead for the three. Kendall was extremely upset after that call, after that shot. He didn't think that was supposed to go, and he thought something, thought someone pushed him illegally. He's definitely he's arguing with the ref right now. And an excellent whip around to get the open shot. And now Texas State has regained the lead for the first time since the first period. And Texas could not take advantage of the two-man advantage. And now they're paying for it severely. Texas, even though their Texas is down and they haven't been playing that well during those power plays, they definitely need to come out with some aggression that Texas State is showing right well, now. Texas is trying to be aggressive. Halford pushes it down to the back door, flipping it back up to the top. Booth with it, a long pass, and gets it back into the boards. Booth traveling after it, hit hard. Now here comes Arami, flipping it up to the top to Dayton. Dayton slipping up and waiting for his team, trying to get onside, up to, Ger up to Brett. Brett taking a shot, and it's... Picked up by Kendall. Texas State very aggressive coming out into this period after they've regained all of their players. And it is incredible to me just how persistent this team has been through being down two goals, being down two men, and able to take the lead here in the third period. And one of the keys for this Texas State team is that they've created a lot of offensive pressure and they try to attack the offensive zone as much as possible. Yeah. And you want to keep the puck in the attack zone if you want to win a hockey game. Now chasing after in the Bobcat zone, trying to clear it back to the Texas way. They do. Now Heffin with it. Now Bowden chasing after. Now Watts clearing, going out to the near side. Hill flipping it around the curve. And Grafano getting hit. And now Brett. We took a shot earlier, trying to clear it up to Adair. Adair, shot contested. Moreno, flipping it up to Texas. It gets hit as he does. Heiser trying to flip it up. And now in transition, Bowden trying to clear some room. It's his first time in the game. He gets flipped up on the board, and the shot goes, and it's caught 
from Soden as he covers it up on a shot from Nick from Moreno. And the score remains as is. And a big play from Soden, who's been so well throughout the night despite the three goals. Curtis Hallweger was getting into it with one of the Texas players on that last play. He was hitting his stick. The ref saw it. It was right in front of the ref, but he didn't call anything. I mean, this is, getting, this is a chippy game. Both teams want to win. 4-3, 10 minutes left to go. 10 minutes and 53 seconds left to go. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a battle. That's Zamuro for sure. on the fight. Going after her across the boards. Clears it, trying to take it around the side. Flips it in, but it's blocked by the Bobcats. All in. Grachos. Trying to take it up to the top. Flips it behind. Now into the near side. Almost complete on the, comp on the attempt to get it to Danto. Now back into the Texas end. Here comes Psyche. And charging on his side is Hughes. Hughes taking it up. And here comes Crabtree. Crabtree. Taking it behind the Longhorns end, try to complete it to Gerard down low, and Gerard can't hold on to it, and Texas has it back. Trying to clear. Bobcats create pressure. Back into the Bobcats end. Now charging after is Jamuro. Jamuro takes up the stick, trying to clear it up to a free man. Kicks it up to Gracho. Gracho's flipping up, can't complete to McGowan. McGowan, shot from Psyche, and the Bobcats now in transition. Here comes it there, and a delayed call, a foul. And it appears on the Texas State end. That stops the play and the Bobcats a little concerned because they seemed like they had a chance to go off and have a chance at a goal. Oh, oh yeah, the Bobcats had a really good opportunity there and Gerard was definitely confused as to why there was a penalty called on play or stoppage in play. It looks like number 22, Jason Crabtree is heading to the box for the Texas State Bobcats. Well, they are calling a penalty on him, so down a man again. And Texas has a chance to try and tie it. Alford flipping it up top. Now a long shot coming from Durham, and it's blocked. Back to Durham. Durham flicking up to Alford on the boards. Flips it to Grachos. Grachos thinking about a shot. He'll flip it up right to McGowan. Now and now onto the boards. Bobcats try and clear. A minute 39 left in the power play. 9.29 to play in the third period. Bobcats have a 4-3 lead. You never know if Texas is going to get another power play in the rest of this game, so they definitely need to take advantage of this power play right here, right now. Danto into the Bobcat in. Flipping up top. Now Grachos with it around the circles. Grachos swiftly moving through. Now on the boards, pressed up against from Larson. Now back to Grachos. Taking it up to the top. Trying to find a shot. Grachos with the shot, and it's wide. Rebounded from Dantos to the hill. And Halford takes it. Grachos, a minute left in the power play. Flips it left. A long shot. Why? McGowan testing his luck. Grachos finding quarter along the boards. And Gerard trying to clear and able to get it back into the long run end. 43 seconds left in the penalty. Texas trying a new line. And out comes Moreno. And a big hit from. Brett, as this goes in on the left side, back behind the Texas State goal, fighting for it, whipping it around, trying to get it through is Jamuro. He can't get it in. Jamuro still recovers, takes another shot, and it's blocked. The rebound and it's covered from Texas State, and they're able to hold on to it. And as Texas tries to regain possession, back across the goal, and it skips away, and the Bobcats have another defensive stop. Ten seconds in the penalty, and it looks like Texas won't be able to take advantage of it. Brett charging. Texas State's just definitely playing with more aggression right now. I mean, you saw Texas had a great opportunity to score right there, but Texas State not allowing anything once again. Now Texas State now back to full men. Fully staffed as Dayton tries to give Texas State a chance to take a two-score lead and possibly put this game away. Ray flipping it up to Brett. Brett taking a sweeping shot, and it's wide. Now flipping over. Getting back into the top side. Now Moreno trying to flip it through, but Parker clears it back to the Texas end. Uh, Texas State appearing to be so aggressive because they've seen how Texas has been able to recover throughout this game. Webb pressing hard. Webb trying to get after. And he's blocked up, and he can't get a free spot, but it goes to Booth. Booth flips it around the corner in the to try and give Texas some time to recover. Now into the game comes Hill. 
Now Carpenter flips it up to Arami. Contesting hard is Webb. Webb able to bring it to Booth. Booth trying to get it to Webb, and he's fighting for it. Trying to recover Crabtree. Aggressively putting it in. Arami back up to the top to chase. Now in the breakaway. Klein on the breakaway. Flips it left. Hoffer with the shot, and it's up and high. Webb with the rebound. Great opportunity by Hoffer there. He's one of the guys who want to see the puck in his with his stick. But just was a little high on that shot. Now Kendall aggressively moving forward. Trying to press Hallford in the middle. It's trying to flee it to the Bobcat side. New lines come in. Six minutes to play in the third period. Longhorns down 4-3 to Texas State, who owns the series on the season. Texas trying to stay in possession for the end of the season results. Now Klein. Texas State taking the strategy of staying in Texas' zone and not being able to be on their end. They won't feel Texas will ever score. They're being so aggressive. But that will, Mark, won't that allow Texas to have certain spots on these breakaways just like we just saw? Of course. Texas definitely is going to get opportunities like that, and they have a kind of an opportunity right here, a well, three-on-two advantage. Durham on the three-and-two. Tries to flip out, takes a long shot, and it's blocked. Coming over is McGowan. McGowan tries to free it up, but well defensed by the Bobcats, and a delayed foul. Looks like they're going to say Durham tried to slash on that. But up in the Texas still trying to go through, and they'll end up calling it. It seems Durham will be put through to the penalty box, and they will. So Texas down a goal, down a man, 5-12 to play in the period, and they have two minutes to try and sustain. So, Mark, I ask you, with two minutes here, you're down a man. Do you stay aggressive? How do you play in this position whenever you're down a goal? Well, you got you to come out aggressively, even though you're down up 5-4. You got to be conservative, but you got to be aggressive at the same time. You got to come out with that intensity, but you got to be conservative, not letting goals go through. Make sure they're not getting any great passes or great shots up. Because Kendall struggled this period. I mean, he has every opportunity, or he has a good chance to uh, retain his, his play from earlier, but he, the, he needs to step it up. And, but what's part of it is that the players in front of him need to step it also so he, he doesn't have to do so much work. Well, Texas has called a timeout to think things over. Texas had a two-game winning streak sweeping Southern Methodist last weekend with, on the Fridays and Saturdays. But leading into this weekend, Texas State won. And that's kind of how it's been. The longest win streak for Texas so far, a four-game streak at the end of last semester, October through November 1st. But throughout it all, inconsistency throughout it all, and Texas trying to at least set themselves back on the right path. Now out of the timeout, 5-10 to play. Texas State in the Longhorn territory. Flips it around the boards, trying to recover his Texas. Now able to get it up and out to the Bobcat zone. Now in an aggressive standpoint, Texas is forced to play defense. Without a man, now in transition. Here comes Ray. Ray takes his back and Parker with it. Back into center ice, Texas able to clear. 1.30 to go in the penalty. 4.40 to go in the third period. Texas State forcing it up. Now here comes Ray. One on against Bowden, a big hit as Bowden able to clear back right into the waiting stick of Dayton. Dayton up to the top to Parker. Parker trying to free it. Adair takes a long shot, but it's taken away from Texas. He's trying to get it down low, though a positioning Ray. But the Texas is able to clear with 416. One minute to go in the penalty. Texas is doing a great job on this penalty kill, not allowing any shots to get to the goal, to get to Kendall. They're doing a great job. Texas is able to clear again. Now a possible opportunity for McGowan. McGowan takes a long shot wide. Following up is Garfano. And Texas will back off a bit. 40 seconds to go in the penalty as Texas State now has a three-on-three. Three. Crabtree. Takes it on the right side to the trailing Hughes. Takes a shot blocked by Kendall and out of play. 30 seconds left in this power play. Texas has done a great job for this first minute and 30 seconds, and they need to keep, keep it up, keep the defensive effort up during these 30 seconds, and then after that, they need to get really aggressive to take a, a, get a good shot on the goal to tie this game up and hopefully force an overtime. Well, Mark, what do you expect to see as soon as Texas comes out of this penalty? 
Well, as soon as they come out with this penalty, I think they're definitely going to be going with Garachos and Hallford, the two guys who've scored goals for this team, and maybe Durham also. But Durham's in the penalty box right now. But we'd like to see those two guys get those three guys get involved, possibly get another goal on their stat sheet. Texas able to clear again. Ten seconds to go in the penalty. We'll see what they do. Waiting for his chance to come back out is Durham. Durham has a goal already in the game. See if he can come back out and tie it. Heiser with it. Now flip it up to the top. Smith can't handle it, and it seemed he had an open shot. And Heiser can't believe that he's got the missed opportunity. Now Gerard on the other end, and it's blocked by Texas. Gerard back with it, up to the top, trailing. Here comes a shot, and he can't get it off as it's taken away by Heiser. And it goes back to the Texas end. Penalty over. Durham comes back. Now flips it up into Smith. Smith takes it. Now it's a... Back into the Bobcat end. 242 to play in the third period. Texas State happy with a 4-3 lead. They just have to sustain it with the aggression from Texas. Back into the center ice. Texas urgently trying to fight it. But here comes Nixon on the left side. Nixon trying to free up a shot towards the middle. Now it's back in the side and is recovered by Psyche. Psyche off the glass. Good pass, but it's a little too far. And Texas State able to rebound. Back into the back side of Danto. Danto flipping it. Trying to lead it up. And into the Bobcat in. Webb will sub out, and here comes McGowan. We've talked about McGowan. He has 16 goals on the year so far, and they'll need one more as Kendall clears it to the Bobcat in. 1.52 to play in the third period. Now an open shot. Here comes Holwager. Holwager with the shot, and it's wide. Once Texas gets the ball out of their defensive zone, I'm, sh I'm sure they're going to be pulling the goalie to get a, another uh, one-man advantage. Gracios with the long shot. Too high. Out of the middle, Hallford with it. Hallford at the blue line. Hallford trying to free space. And he's kicked an aggressive play from Ray as he's able to come in on the defensive side. Hallford trying to stay with the puck. Puts it into the boards. Gracios fighting for it. Kicking it into Hallford. 117 to play in the third. Hallford takes it up to the shot. Trying to hold on to it. Here's McGowan, and he can't. Urgently reaching out his stick, but he can't hold on to possession. Now Gracios getting on the right end. On the boards, trying to flip it back up to the top. Hallford on the rebound. Trying to get on to it, and then Texas State holds on to it and covers it up. With 103 to play, we'll have a face-off. And Texas urgently trying to get it off there. You see bodies flying, just trying everything they can to get a shot free, but the Texas State defense holding like a wall. Now Texas will have an extra body up there, 6 on 5 advantage as Kendall is left the net, and there's an open net for Texas. Kendall aggressive. Lee staying out here with a minute 03 to play. Texas will take a timeout. And whenever you pull that goalie with a minute to play you risk giving up a second goal and Texas State going up too with a minute 03 left is that a, a little too early you think or do you think that's exactly the time they need well you get I mean Texas was it was hard for them to score with two man like one man advantages and two man advantages earlier in the period with five minutes so I think one minute's definitely enough time or I mean they need any chance they can get I mean they can't they don't need a goalie in that now because they need someone to score. They don't need someone to defend the net. They need someone to score. And that's why they took the goalie out of the net and they put an extra man on the ice. For the six on five advantage. And so now they have six men on the, on the ice trying to get one goal to tie and force this one into overtime. Last October, we saw Texas force overtime close to the end of the third period. Now they've cleared the goalie. Now Texas State able to clear back to the Texas end. Urgently chasing after Moreno. Moreno trying to clear around. No goal here. This is dangerous territory as he flips it. Can't hold on to it. Texas State charging. Trying to bring it around the boards. And up comes Texas State with possession. And Texas State able to hold on. Now coming in, Dayton. Dayton flips it up. Now it comes into Danto. Danto flipping it up. Try to get into the Texas State in, and he hits a shot, and it's blocked and deflected. Ricochet is out of bounds. You can take a sigh of relief if you're a Longhorn fan. That one looked a little close for you as it stayed on the Longhorn end. 36 seconds to play. About 30 seconds going by, and not a single shot off of that faceoff. Now Halford winning. 
That one is cleared into the Texas end, chasing after. Now 30 seconds remaining. Otto, taking right side, down the blue line, trying to force a shot, he's got 20 seconds remaining. Now on the breakaway, Gerard trying to flick it into the goal, it's too wide, but coming on to the end. 14 seconds remaining, can Texas get a shot off? Hawford, he's gonna start moving now in a delayed whistle. 10.3 remaining in the third period, Texas is down one. Looks like a penalty on McGowan. He, I, fi I figure it's that he lost the game, and now he's just showing a little, he's losing a little bit of his composure. Now Texas will have a five on five, five on five, uh, five on four disadvantage with Kendall in the net now. Well, Kendall comes back in because it will be a face off in the Texas end. I imagine as soon as they get that puck out, Kendall will race off and someone will come and try on the Texas bench. The face off won by Gerard, flips it up seven seconds. Here comes Dantos trying to flip it up. Gerard with it, he'll take a last shot and it goes high from Kendall. One second remaining and Texas State holds on. Texas State wins the game four to three and have the series between Texas and Texas State. The I-35 rivalry is theirs in the win on the series. Texas had a chance. Pulled the goalie, had a couple of penalties where they had a full advantage, a two-man advantage at times, but they couldn't pull through. Texas State defensively working so well in the third period, coming back from two goals down in the second period to pull off the win. Texas State improves to 16 and nine on the season. Texas falls to 14 and 11. And so many good games between these two teams. The Bobcats come up the victor and mark from that last end. Texas threw everything they had. Texas State just possessed that pulled goalie so many times in the Texas end. Whenever you're like that, Texas surely trying to get it on that end. What has Texas State done so well at that end? Well, Texas State, they, they're just showing more aggressive. They're getting a lot of good shots up. I mean, you saw Texas, yeah, they got some shots up, but they weren't the best shots. Texas State were getting plenty of shots up. And... They gave a lot of opportunities to score, and they're getting a lot of chances on rebounds, on wide open nets. Texas State definitely played a lot better in this game, and it shows, and now they, they're hoisting their I-35 cup. There's the I-35 cup slash keg, and that's, well, they're, they're in college, so that's, we, we want to, that's, that's expected. That that's not expected. cool. He can't hold on to it himself. That's the I-35 trophy between these two teams. Texas State owns it. They're bringing it home for this season, and Texas disappointedly comes away with it uh, on the losing end. But the Bobcats playing so well in this game. In the first period, so aggressive. In the second and third period, playing so well defensively, but aggressive again to come back from two up. It seemed at times it was the Longhorns' game to win. I mean, the Longhorns had it in the back, they, and it seemed like they should have won too. They had at least seven minutes in this third period where they were on the power play and they just weren't able to take advantage of this that great opportunity and it texas state was able to pe have a great penalty kill and that's why they won this game kendall wasn't able to keep it up in the four, uh, third period but overall i thought he had a pretty good effort on this game but texas state definitely came victorious and i, I told you earlier brooks this last period was come down the goalie play and sodden definitely outplayed Kendall in this last period, and that's why Texas State came away with the victory. Well, you see Holweger hoisting that trophy, and the Bobcats taking pictures, good for the memories. Holweger on this one, that he's a senior from Plano, Texas. This is his last season for the Bobcats, and I'm sure this one's near and dear to his heart. Bringing it to the Texas State fans who traveled the short distance on I-35 to watch this team take away the victory. This is the Stanley Cup of Texas hockey. They're all excited about it. It looks like they all have their playoff beards going too. This is a big game. They're all taking a picture now. Great game by both teams, but Texas State definitely played a lot better in this last period when it counted. Well, the battle via 35 won by them. There'll be speculation whether that trophy gets filled up in a few hours. But, you know, there's <laughs> always, there are always ways to celebrate. Hopefully they're <laughs> under the age of 21. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know that a few of them are. We can look at a roster and figure it out. But, hey, we're not the police. We are commentators, and we love these games. And these games 
doing so well. I mean, well, you couldn't ask for a better game. The last two that we've had, one in overtime, one coming down to the goalie pool. And, and, and Texas, having those two chances, it never seemed out of reach for them. So Texas going into these, the last part of their season here, still not out of contention to be able to play further into the postseason, but certainly this one sets them back in a way. Well, this definitely sets them back, but they're able to play against probably a bigger rival in Texas A&M next weekend. So hopefully they're able to take advantage or beat Texas A&M on the road and hopefully make it to the postseason. Well, that game even holding more significance at this point now that they drop this game in a two-game series getting swept by Texas State. Things looking bleak for the Longhorns as they move off of an impressive Aggie hockey team, one of the best in the Texas area. It's definitely going to be tough to beat that Aggie team. They're, they're definitely one of the better teams in Texas, and it's going to be a tough team to beat for Texas, the Texas Longhorns. And as we move on into our post-game show here on Texas Student Television, glad to have you with us here. Brooks Kibina here and Mark Skoll. It's been a great series for us to be able to produce that to you. And with the, with the score, the, the, the final score being 4-3 in this game, uh, last time you got to see an overtime comeback for the Texas Longhorns. This time you see a two-goal comeback from the Texas State Bobcats. I mean, it was an interesting game through and through with a lot of great players, a lot of great plays. And Mark, which play stuck out to you the most in this, ball, in this, in this game? Which plays or which players? Well, the well, play. The, the play. play. The plays, well, we got to go with the plays and the players. The two big plays were the goals by Ray and Gerard, which we mentioned in the pregame chat that these two guys, they've, they're scoring like every night for their team. Mm -hmm. uh, Gerard averaging two, goal, uh, uh, two points a game and Ray averaging three points a game. So, and they definitely came out tonight and they showed that, this is, that they're the best players on this Texas State team. And their goals definitely showed why they're the better players on this team. Right, and I'm sure Holweger wanted a chance to be able to actually bring in that penalty shot at the end. Great, great defense by Kendall. Kendall, throughout this game, had many opportunities where he was at a disadvantage, and so did Soden. But Soden being able to hold on to all of that and eventually getting the win. So Kendall, his record goes down to 4-2, and two, and Soden being able to hold on and add a victory to his mark. So we've seen a lot of great goalie play, but play of the game in your mind, Mark. Player of the a game, I got to go with Hayden Ray. He got the the goal to put the Texas Bob State Bobcats ahead, and that's the goal that won the game. So I got to go with Hayden Ray, the best player on the team, scoring 61 points this season, now 62 on the season. So you got to go with him. Clinch the cup for him. Got to go with Hayden Ray. Well, Hayden Ray definitely has a good shot at this game, but we're going to go ahead and kick it over to our rinkside reporter, Shelby Hodges. What do you got, Shelby? All right, Brooks, Mark, I'm here with senior goalie David Kendall. So, David, that was such a rough end to that game. What happened in the third period that y'all could have changed? Uh, we had a couple defensive breakdowns, uh, especially right in front of our net. Those are hard to recover from, uh, especially when you don't have very much space. A um, couple, I think, missed calls by uh, officiating, but, you know, that's just that's part of the game. I think that went uh, both ways a little bit. Um, Overall, I think uh, we played a great second period, but uh, just wasn't enough. Got to put 60 minutes together. Okay. And then it's so tough playing a rival like this two nights in a row, and they're so physical. How difficult is that for y'all? Uh, it's. I mean, everyone's always a little salty from the first game. So, uh, especially at the uh, end, the end of the year, we know we're not going to see him any uh, see him again. So uh, we want to leave it all out there. Uh, and so that always makes for a fun atmosphere. Uh, sometimes it's just, sometimes it just doesn't go your way. And then looking on to next weekend, you guys play A&M. What do you think you're going to do in practice this week to get ready for that game? Uh, I think we'll just keep plugging away. Um, we've got a great breakout. We've got a fantastic power play. We've got a lot of guys that can really shoot the puck. Um, and so we're just going to keep going uh, that way, put some pucks in the net, um, hopefully keep them out, and uh, hopefully come back with two wins. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Have a good rest of your night. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Brooks, Mark, it's back to you guys. Thanks, Shelby. And you were listening to David Kendall on the interview on there. Kendall obviously disappointed with how things ended up, but a, a terrific game from Ken Kendall on that end. But uh, looking at how, how he's had to be able to play, not the initial starter throughout this season, one of the secondary goals, but four goals given up on the season right around that average on this one. So Kendall 
I mean, throughout this game has played very valiantly. Kendall definitely had a great game. He's a senior. He's definitely playing his heart out. I mean, he could have. I mean, some goals couldn't have been preventable because they were always on the penalty kill constantly in this last period. But you got to love the effort from Kendall. He had a great game. Not the finish he would have liked, but great game overall by Kendall. Right, and Kendall uh, getting a chance to do a talk with Hodges and Texas State ending up taking up this victory, finaling up the 4-3, being able to take the season series against the Longhorns and the battle for I-35. So Texas State moving on, having the chance to put themselves and distancing, distancing themselves from the Longhorns in the final spot in the regular season. So from that and Texas State moves on. The Longhorns will go on and play Texas A&M next week starting on Friday to try and push themselves back towards the postseason. But for all that, we'll have and talking about that here on Texas Student Television. Glad to have you here with us. He's Mark Skull. I'm Bruce Gabina. Your final score tonight, Texas State, the winners, 4-3 to three over the Texas Longhorns. We'll see you next time.